Hey guys, and welcome to Smells Like Teen Angst. And we are going to be talking about Pretty Little Liars, Original Sin, Episode 8. The final three have dropped, and we're here for you. And as always, I am here with my ladies in crime. Introduce yourselves. I'm Jordan. <laughs> and I'm Kiki. <laughs> We've got J, K, and S. That's what we'll go by from now. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm giggly. Look, we're, here we go. Um, so this episode starts right after the girls all get that text about Tyler being <laughs> dead from A. So I appreciate that we're like picking up where we left off. They're not like jumping ahead in time. This is now just flowing through um they're tr trying all the girls are trying to figure out what do they do do they tell the police tyler's dead do they show what's going on the next big question is who is this mysterious sixth signature that is on the book of all the people who had to sign in in order to visit rose at the asylum and tabitha and imogen share their assault stories with the girls so they really set this episode up pretty heavy with a lot of questions and confusion so that we can like rock and roll into these final three episodes and then Imogen has a plan which I don't understand how this would work but we're just gonna go with it for the sake of it being a television show um <laughs> they realize that tab that Imogen is carrying the DNA of the possible baby dad of the baby daddy and the person who possibly assaulted her so she's like there's a blood drive at school if we can collect samples of every man that goes to our high school then we will magically get a lab to break the law and <laughs> figure out if there's a match so who's doing this who's doing this maury uh who is doing I'm it? so glad you set it up the way you did because I was watching the show. I was watching it and I was like, y'all, I don't know a lot about a lot, but I know a little <laughs> bit about a little. And I don't think that DNA testing works that way. Like all of those samples were corrupted or I don't right? know what they called it. Like they you were all, it. they were all gross. What do you call it? There's a, there's a particular word that I'm looking for, but like it was messy. It's messy. Uh, when you mix stuff up, you know, shouldn't mix stuff up with. We're gonna we're gonna skip to the end, and we're gonna just talk about the DNA drive. Does it feel good about just jumping to the blood drive real quick and yes. getting that out of the way? So they literally get Noah's mom, who's willing to break the law for them, and talk to a friend at the lab to see if she'll run the DNA, and then they get Kelly to help them because she's already volunteering with the nurse for the blood drive and convince her that they just need, you know, just a little blood from on a cotton ball. Right. And I'm like, okay. And then as you contaminated, say, sorry, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> all <the same> contaminated. <laughs> exactly. All the same cotton balls go into one giant trash can. Yeah. With it not intermingle. I don't maybe I don't know how DNA works apparently. Like Girl, you can't get like that. Even with hair, even yeah. with hair, That's you have to have the tip, like the actual root of someone's hair to test hair. And when you pulled that hairball out of the shower, I was like, girl, you can't get nothing off of that. You can't get anything off of that. You can't get anything. Right. That's the that's the next step, right? And so like in to order to keep in mind that when it comes to human beings, like it's like 95% of, of our DNA is the fucking same, okay? So you need as much detail as possible so you can get that 5% to figure out exactly who is who. Right. Like, That's it's like so when ridiculous. You when you do 23 and me, they give you like a vial and they tell you to fill up the whole vial with spit. It's not like one drop or two. It's like, you better have been chewing gum all day long because <laughs> you need right. a lot right anyway <laughs> and in order like because no one you know talks to sean and is like hey we need the, you to get the football players because she and i just love that noah runs her mouth to her boyfriend like he's not possibly sketch town um 
you know what I mean? And she's like, these poles were assaulted and we need to get all the football. Nothing. (laughs) What'd you say? I'm sorry. I said that part because Ash knew nothing. Okay. Right. Mouse kept her mouth. She's like, everyone's a suspect. Mouse is us. Right. Mouse loves Ash, but she didn't tell him nothing. He was in the dark about everything. Everything. (laughs) So he's like, oh, the entire football team is doping. So like, they'll never do it. And so they go into break into the boys locker room, stealing toothbrushes and hair fall, hair from the drains. And I'm just like, none of razors and swabbing mouth guards. And none of that is how DNA works. I love that all of the girls- paternity test of a baby still in her stomach that's possible that's possible that's possible no but, but don't you have to like take it like in a hospital you can't just do it yourself right no she would have to go to a hospital and they'd have to do a procedure but yeah um she could do that and noah's mom who's like could help or have a nurse help or whomever yeah i don't really it's well, not like it, they don't they, just draw blood that's not well, how that works gonna get away with getting a <laughs> Well, I mean, depending on how much testing that she had already had done on the baby, they could have had enough accurate information on a file to run a paternity test. That being said, this is a real thin plot point. I love that all the girls got together to assist Noah and Tabitha and that they were all in this harebrained scheme together and that they were working as a team and that Kelly was there for them. That being said, this ain't how science works, (laughs) y'all. I don't understand how that made it through a writer's room, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, you sit around eight people and they crack the plot point of all your shit and they just let this fly? Look, not one person in that room was like, y'all, I've seen Maury. You can't do it like this. (laughs) You are the father. This turns out to be a bit of key information. Right, but they're not going to get the answer for two weeks, so it's a yeah. no, it, there's yeah. no moot at the moment. And here's like here's the thing: if one of our viewers, because as I have said in the past, we have very passionate people who have joined us. Welcome to the Smells Like Teenage Family because of this show. And if y'all know something we don't, I am not a scientist nor a biologist. So you, uh, I don't work in the medical field. <laughs> nor and nor friend of Maury. <laughs> nor. <laughs> Nor I this by saying I don't know a lot about a lot. So correct me if I'm wrong, people. Absolutely. And until then, I'm going to think this was a very thin. I'm just go let it go for the sake of television. Just go let it. We're going to let it go. Um. So I that happened. Say, you know what my friend's dad used to say all the time? We'd point out plot holes when we were kids. He would go, "It was in the script," and they cut it out for editing. Like all the time, we'd put out a plot hole, and he'd be like, "Girl, it was in the script." They cut it out, cut it for editing. I like that. I like that. Um, <laughs> so Tabitha's mom finally gets her notice, her package from A this time around. And it is a book of the Scarlet Letter that was signed up from the library. And if I don't know if this is still a thing in schools anymore, but they have like the little tabby card that you write your name in. And it said Angela Waters all over it um, with a note that says silence kills. So we learn in her flashback that Sydney knew about the assault and did nothing about it, which is, she knew about the assault. Her daughter has been assaulted, which she learns this episode as well. Like, I can't even imagine what it's like being her in this episode of feeling how hard you failed someone who was supposed to be a friend and then how hard you may feel that you failed your own daughter. Right. Out of all the moms, I think that this is the first one where I felt really bad for her because it's it was apparent to her, I think, when she was a teenager that what she was doing was wrong and it's haunted her. And now it really karma's going to get you, girl. It might take a minute, but that karma is coming back for you. And be it at this point, I know too much about the moms, so I can't speak at a normal level for just this episode. But these women have fucking issues. Like They really do, though. Mm-hmm. They really do. And one thing I'm going to jump ahead a little bit is that the moms all meet up at one point. I was going to talk about that Corey, for this episode. Corey is putting pressure on Sydney, and she's like, Tabitha and Imogen are the ringleaders about this whole Angela Waters thing. They're the ones who are telling all the rest of our girls to um, 
follow this law. So you need to stop them. And then Leah Salonga is like, just go and snoop on them. She's like, I do it already. Well, she Elodie, doesn't this well is, enough. This not serve you. This has not served you, Elodie. Why are you doing this bad advice to somebody else? And it really is one of those moments where you're like, have these girl women learned nothing? Have they learned nothing? <laughs> no, I no. know. I'm like, and like for Mouse's mom to be like, snoop on them. She hasn't snooped well enough because Mouse is out here talking to crazy people. In these and she doesn't even know. Sure doesn't. Sure doesn't. So Farron really does nothing this episode. She is overdoing PT and she thinks if she overdoes it, she'll be healthier sooner. And her teacher's like, nah, we'll do it next year. And so now she's like, well, and that was basically her entire storyline. She convinces the girls to go clubbing. I like that scene. They all look really cute in their little club outfits. It was cute. And I thought it was funny that- But are they drinking? No. 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 Uh, no and I thought it was weird that they're like oh we can go to this club they don't check IDs when they easily could have just made it an underage club so I don't know why they added that extra layer when a lot of small towns have like 18 and under clubs on I, my thing was with the club thing was they were drinking these pretty cocktail looking things so I'm like are they drinking one and two they let pregnant ass Imogen up in the club I mean, do you remember Club Kiss at Hollywood and Highland back in the day? Club Kiss had a whole menu of mocktails. I don't know. I always Every club has a mocktail game. list. So who knows? Um, and I never seen pregnant girls in the club. The only <laughs> oh, person I seen girls in the club is when my friends started getting married and having bachelorette parties and they'd have their pregnant ass friends show up. And beyond, I, I was in your wedding. You better be at my wedding. <laughs> you like, must not remember going to the Crazy Horse <laughs> in Claremont back in the day, because I seen a hell of pregnant ladies up in the Crazy Horse. I don't know. Anyway, oh, listen, I'm gonna take my pregnant self up in the club. I like to dance. It's my favorite way to exercise. I'm gonna dance that baby out. <laughs> Go dance that baby out. It got real fantasy for me in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> it did. For a show that I feel like has been very based in reality while still being a horror show, this episode really it pushed the buttons, y'all. It yeah. was pushing it. I was like, just make it an underage club. What's it matter? So like when 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 Imogen and Tabitha get back, Image Sydney dismisses Imogen to talk to her. And this is when, you know, she lets her know what happened to her. Um eventually. And because she, she, she mom went snooping. Mom went snooping and they argue, but she doesn't tell her right at that moment. She waits. Yeah. She they have like a standoff That's because they have a standoff because Tabitha knows that her mom wants to ask her something else. And Sydney is basically too afraid to say it. And Tabitha's like, just ask me what you want to know. And Sydney doesn't say anything. So Tabitha just storms off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have Tyler's father who shows up like causing drama saying Sydney like that that Tabitha knows what happened to her son his son and she kicks him out and then you know she asks if Tyler hurt her and you know that's when she's like no it wasn't Tyler and lets her know what happened to her and it's a very heart-wrenching moment I felt in the show which they're still I handling well yeah, right. The show's handled this very responsibly. And I'm usually very anti these kind of things being included in shows because so many shows just handle it terribly. And you're just watching women get brutalized over and over again. I appreciate that. You never see their assaults. It never happens on screen. Um, the only time it's brought up is when the girls talk about it. It's very much led with their conversation, their disclosure and their healing. And I think that was handled very well and responsibly. Yeah, I agree. Can we talk about kelly getting back from the club because kelly yeah. kelly that's, she was next on my list girl Poor thank kelly. you comes home to her drunk ass daddy you know sheriff beasley and he's scolding her and uh, like we while yelling at her we get this flash of him she's like well where have you been and flash of him hooking up with a guy in an alleyway and then Kelly's like, fuck you, dad. And then runs off to hook up with Greg in a car. And she's like, call me Karen. And I'm like, multiple. See, that part was a little weird. But the rest of it, go, Kelly, go. Go, Kelly, go. Yell back at your dad. Like, <laughs> Well, before that, Imogen and Kelly start talking. And so do, yeah. Kelly and Kelly and Imogen and Kelly talk. Baron and Kelly talk. Everybody kind of has these little heart, like, like we're cracking Kelly's shell. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're finally letting her be Kelly and not Karen. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all the girls are letting her into the bubble, into the secret A club. And, um, and then of course we get that one moment where she's like, call me Karen. Therefore still kind of making us wonder, is she Kelly? Is she Karen? We're never going to (laughs) know. I know. I feel like it's something that like either you care about still or you don't. After the whole moment with A and her being like, I'm Kelly. I just think that Kelly in this episode specifically is just having such a hard time with herself, with her home life. And like, she's like, everyone wants me to be Karen. So I might as well just be Karen. Is kind of how I right, like and I think that you know Karen was the stronger sister, and I think she wants to channel some of that like strength and that bad bitch energy. Yeah, and it's easier for her to put on her persona of her sister rather than be like, no, I'm a bad bitch too. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, Mouse is next on my list. So Mouse's mothers are separated, and she is begging them to work things out. And right now, they really, really don't want to. And she's asking about her father, which her mother refuses to tell her the name of. So she goes and finds her birth certificate, finds out his name is Aaron Stevens, and then she decides to put on a Girl Scout uniform because she still got those for some reason floating around, and to go to his house and knock on the door and try to introduce herself. So this is another thing, plot hole, because I was like, listen, from one snacky to another, Girl Scout season is in spring, y'all. The cookies happen in spring. Don't come to my door at Thanksgiving and be like, I got Girl Scout cookies. Those are old cookies. Right. Which I don't think she was thinking because when was the last time she was a brownie as like a 16 year old girl, that is the wrong age. She should probably be in the blue outfit. I don't know what that is called. Um, she, she was in a Girl Scout uniform. She should be. And she was a, bra- she was wearing a brownie. It was brown. no, brownies. Are the older ones. Brownies are the older ones. Aren't they? Oh, it goes mm-hmm. Daisy brownie, junior cadet cadet. She was wearing like a junior cadet uniform. Okay. Like, who would have been like a 10 year old. You know what I mean? Like, like middle schooler. Yeah. So Max, she should be in blue. Yes. Um, and her dad was like, you can't be here and told her to go away. And I don't blame him. Like you can't just show up like that out of the blue. I mean, people do it all the time. We hear the stories, but I'm not upset with him for doing so. Yeah, no. I I do. It was hard for me to read that reaction. I'm like, does he know her? Does he not know her? Is that her, I, father? her father? It was I got weird. from it. I got from it that he knew her and recognized her, but also we're leaving out the part that um, a little girl opens the door mm-hmm. and that's followed by another woman who's presumably her mother, mm-hmm. who's presumably his wife. So at this point, he is probably, he has a whole new ass life. He does not want to take time to explain to his wife and his small child that like, oh, I fathered a child that I have nothing to do with several years ago. Mm-hmm. Or even so with the story that Mouse's mom says that she basically kidnapped her and didn't give the baby yeah. to the to him and whomever whoever he was with at the time because i highly doubt it was this woman with his reaction exactly Mm -hmm. i also thought this was something i was wondering if it was going to be something talked about or not ash is confirmed as trans and i knew going into this that the actor who plays ash is a trans actor because he he was on um like not queer as folk but the l word generations or the Q or whatever the new one was uh and I was I was wondering if they were just never going to bring that up or if they were able to just play a male character and they've now made it a storyline for him and I don't know and I like it and I also don't like it I'm like I really like it the only thing that bothers me is that I wish they confirmed it earlier in the season because I understood that Ash was in the I don't remember what they call it. I'm going to call it Rainbow Alliance, but Ash was in like the the queer club at school and was trying to get Mouse to join. And I never understood why, which is, you know, like that's, it's, I don't need to know people's background, but it didn't make sense to me for this seemingly cis man to be a member of this club and try to get Mouse into the club too. So I I wish they had said something about it earlier. Yeah. yeah right i mean ally, ally. <laughs> hello 
Yeah. So we're eight episodes deep and this is something that's confirmed. I, I agree. I think it, maybe that's why it's rubbing me weird. It's just so late in the game. And um, GSA is now Genders and Sexuality Alliance. They oh, just oh, put oh, the D and the S. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I know you were like, I don't know what it's thank called you. now, Rainbow Alliance. I don't know what it's called now. But when we were in I it, know. it was GSA. Like It was GSA. And I know like the year after I graduated, then they just changed it to Rainbow because gay and straight was not enough. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I don't think we had one of those at my high school. Yeah. Now it's, uh, you went to school in Virginia, girl. <laughs> I was going to Los Angeles. Yeah. Not only do we have one, I was the president four years running. Oh, me too. Oh, we, we had one in Orange County, very conservative Orange County. And um, people would throw stink bombs in there. And Oh, yeah. I got mm, topper. I talk about the bowling that we got. No. They threw tater tots at us. They wouldn't buy stuff from our bake sale. It was a whole they, thing. They broke a window once while we were having a meeting. People are wild. But you know what? That's South Orange County for you. Anyway, <laughs> back to um, this. Back to Mouse. Mouse, you know, after this rejection, continues making really good choices. Yes. <laughs> and reaches and back daddy. out to Steve. I like calling him fake daddy. <laughs> I call him fake daddy too. It's all up in my notes. Fake daddy. Yeah. I didn't love that from else. We talked about the majority of Noah's story already with her mom, getting her mom involved with the DNA scandal. But she has said, she has asked Sean. Oh, go ahead. I do want to say, and I wrote in my notes, that even though we already called the DNA, the DNA plot line very thin, Noah's mom does need to be involved in it because she fucking owes Noah one, okay? She owes Noah. So yes, go along with this garbage because you owe her. Facts. Uh, but she, when talking with Sean and he says all the boys are doping, she asks him to his face, point blank, if he's doing it too. And he's like, absolutely not. And so on Thanksgiving, when she's at his house, when her mom is gone, she digs through his bag because she doesn't believe him, which I completely understand. And finds those little blue pills she saw being passed around in the hallway. So now she knows that Sean lied to her and is using the enhancement pills. Sorry. Anytime I saw them and I was like, oh, little blue pills. And it just made me think of Viagra every time. I, mean, I know. I know. I had the same thought. <laughs> My brain like, is ruined. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Oh, I feel like that was Noah's whole story this episode, and there wasn't a lot to do with her, so I, yeah. I don't have that much about her. Um, the biggest thing next comes from Imogen and Tabitha. They pair them up again a lot um, to go back to visit Train Man Joe, because no one else but them wants to go visit Crazy Joe. And he is real pissed that they're back, and he warns them to drop it, stop digging, because if they don't, it'll be bad for them. And so they're very suspicious and think that Joe might be the person. And so Imogen's like, I'm going to find my mom's senior yearbook. And I'm going to start comparing signatures to the book to see if maybe Joe is that sixth person. Because, you know, she's real good at, at signature analysis. <laughs> right. She's a handwriting expert. <laughs> right. Uh, Tabitha has uh, has that idea to do her revenge plot story for school and her teacher is very unsure about it and is like well if you're gonna do it you got to get your mom to sign the waiver and I love that her mom's like and yes we'll sign it and then it goes all the way to the principal and the principal's like you're not doing a story about rape you're not doing a story about assault we are not doing that and then she's talking to Wes creeper Wes at the movie theater who actually gives her really great advice which is make two movies mm -hmm. So I will say this episode is where my opinion changed and started to align with you guys. Because while we were all like, Wes is creepy, we're but like, maybe we'll see about him. And y'all were like, we don't like Chip either. And I was like, Chip's fine. My opinion started to change this episode. I started to root for Wes. And I'm starting to think that Chip is up to something. Super mm -hmm. up to something. He does, He's like watching in corners. He's like being real sketchy. Right, real sketchy. You know? And then to have it, the, I was like, thanks, Wes, for the great advice. You're still wildly inappropriate. <laughs> nah. But that was good advice for her to make two movies. And then Tabitha gets her own text from A saying, you know, silence kills, just like the message that her mother got. <laughs> well, what do we have? Oh, Imogen, her whole thing with Thanksgiving is she and her mother would go to do the homeless shelter and serve the food, you know, at the soup, the, 
what's it called? Soup kitchen. I was like, what are these called? Uh, and she has a flashback. The to the soup. Huh? The place with the soup. The place with the soup. Um, and she has this flashback of when she's there and Chip has, Chip is with her because now Chip is always going to be in there. That's um, what I'm saying. Why is he next to her all the time? It's shady. Why does he have to be there? All the time. Uh, and she just remembers her mom seeing someone going up to her, it not going well, and then being like, we have to go. And Imogen realizes that that was Rose, which means Rose is still living in Millwood. And so Imogen's like, always I mean, on her own, doing something crazy. Her aha moment. Yeah. Huh, uh-huh, a light bulb. And she does weasel away during the blood drive to get some cookies and just easily, flawlessly logs into an administration computer. Oh, I yeah. Don't, I don't know how that would happen. Also, who digitizes right. records from 20 years ago? Like, even my high school records, they have to go look through files if I need uh-huh. them. Yeah. If you go to my high school now asking for a transcript and you graduated like pre-2006, they're going to tell you to come back in two weeks because somebody has to go find that piece of paper. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, girl, you were on a computer? Absolutely not. Look, Absolutely. Just more, we just let it go. We are just letting it go. I know, but that was too easy. <laughs> let it go. Like Elsa. Okay. <laughs> Um, so she goes and is like, I am going to go investigate the, uh, the water's house by herself, because that's just what Imogen does. And pregnant. very brave woman. <laughs> what you danger, you? girl. Oh, you danger, girl. Um, and so she goes to the house and it's literally a horror show, right? There's cages, there's ropes on, on beds and not in a fun way. Yeah. Um, she finds A's wig. Hey, what? You I just like, heard that just got it i just yeah, got it. it um she finds a's wig like hey, oh, what? i missed it well we're not going back for you girl <laughs> have to watch the recap and see what was funny i don't get why it was funny oh uh, we <laughs> see a's wig hanging on the wall and then crazy joe train man joe shows up at the house and I was like, oh my God, run girl. And he's chasing Imogen throughout the, the house of the knife. And she goes in a room and then sees a dead, de- like desiccated body on a bed. It, was, it gave me psycho vibes. Uh, you know, like yes. Mrs. Bates' body. Yes. Because it even has like, a body. full dress like Mrs. Bates. And I can't, like during this scene, and y'all, I love horror. Like, I will watch a movie on Shutter in my dark bedroom on my phone. Like, yeah. turn my when the movie ends, turn my phone off, roll over, and go right to bed and sleep like a baby. I was watching this episode on AirPods and I had to turn it down because I kept jumping when Crazy Joe was chasing her through the house. <laughs> it was too much. My anxiety was not having it. I know, so high. And then she like grabs a bass, smashes him over the head, and she's like booking it. I'm like, yes, go, Imogen, go, get out of the house. I was very stressed for her. She has high blood pressure, and now I do too. Right? <laughs> I was nervous. Especially that- because A will go from moving uh, 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 right? to like, just charging. So yes. I don't know if Joe had all that in him. You know, Listen, if A, A, why is he going so fast? A I know. goes from having a bum leg to running like the Terminator, and I don't understand. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man so um the big cliffhangers of this episode because i was like that's how this ends this is imogen calls all the girls over to dinner she tells them what happened and now they're all convinced that crazy joe is a and noah's like let's confront him there's five against one and so they all get freaking kitchen (laughs) knives why is she so scrappy? Who did this love to her? So much. Her mom. Oh, no one's scrappy as hell. Her mom. Second of all, I love the girls. <laughs> and they roll up and they see that the Joe is not at the house anymore. The body is gone. And we all know that's Rose's body. Yes, that's what we're landing on. That yes. was Rose's yeah. body. Yeah. yeah. So they go to the train car and they find him with the hanging. He has now unalived himself. We're assuming he did to himself. Um, with a note that said Angela Waters did not die in vain. And they Imogen also sees that Joe had her mom's senior year yearbook, 
the freaking thing is like scratched out like the most angry teenager ever to had hold of it. You All know? the mom's faces are scratched out. Which by the way, do y'all remember doing that with your yearbooks? Like there's a hoe you couldn't stand and you got your yearbook and you were like, bye, bitch. Oh, 100%. Hey, my little sister used to do that. And the thing was, I wanted to remember what those people looked like. So I would just draw a frame around it or like put like a... a like a, a 666 on their head or something like that. Just so I knew when I got older, I could look, know what they looked like and see them and shine on them, which petty, petty, but it feels really good to know that your bully is like, it's beautiful. Balding. Oh yeah. In the I'm middle of the way. I've searched some of my bullies on Facebook and it's the things that I have found are very satisfying. Very yeah. satisfying. It makes you feel so much better. I'm like, you're balding and you sell tires in the middle of America. And I'm thriving. And I'm thriving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this basically it's like they confirmed Joe as the sixth signature. And dun dun dun, that's where we're gonna go. And you know, I feel like Imogen asked such a great question. Like, could that really be that simple? Because it never is. And, and we met, right? And more episodes says to go. It. She's like, I watch horror movies. No, it's not that simple. And I like that. I like that because my brain already, when Joe walked into Rosewater's house is, who the hell is he bringing those groceries to? He lives in the train. So I, I automatically felt A's minions. That's a minion, okay? And, 100%. You know, he killed himself to unattach from A because he knew he had no way out. Mm -hmm. Yep. A is or still- he was murdered by A. Either way. Either, either way. way. Either way. Not A. He failed some, he failed A and he had a punishment. One, <laughs> two, three, not it. <laughs> So that's basically episode eight. Um, uh, head on over to episode nine and we'll talk about it over there, guys. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And we'll see you over on episode nine or on a review or whatever. Okay, bye. Bye.